Okay, guys, so I want to make this video, I'm going to try to make this like really, really super duper simple, as simple as I possibly can. All right. Um, the reason I'm doing this is because there are, a lot, there are a lot of us who are confused about why interest rates are so important. All right. So what I first want to do is you can Google, depending on, you know, depending on where you are, all that stuff, you can Google interest rates, right? And what typically happens is you'll be able to find what today's interest rate is. So right now, today's interest rate is 3.72. You can always Google, um, you know, today's interest rate and you'll be able to find out. All right. So you can see it right there on your screen. Nothing is being hidden from you. All right. Now. If today's interest rate is a 3.5 interest rate, all right? If you were a, a real estate investor, what you would do is you would actually look at what's called the Wall Street Journal Prime, all right? The Wall Street Journal Prime is essentially where banks come together, they make an interest rate uh, for commercial finance and investment uh, lending for you know, real estate. Those are examples of um, commercial loans, okay? Normally 70% or 80%. And so if, if it's 3.25, what normally, normally will happen is that commercial banks will add one or two points. That means that then your loan is gonna be 4.25 or even 5.25, all right? So that's three and a quarter, four and a quarter, five and a quarter, all right? Now, in some cases, people may even have loans uh, investment loans that are, you know, 7%, 8%, 9%, 10%, 12% interest rates. Now, here's what I want you guys to understand of why the interest rates are so crucial. I'm going to switch over, switch over to the, uh, you know, to the digital whiteboard real quick. And I'm going to show you guys why this is important. Because if you don't understand this, uh, basically this will kill you. <laughs> Seriously, but not, but yeah, it'll, it'll kill you. All right, so here we go. So if the interest rate was, so, all right, let's, let's just look at this. Let's say there's a, there's a person named Sally, all right? This is Sally. Wow, my drawing is really bad. Um, anyway, this is a lady named Sally, okay? And Sally happens to work at Starbucks. And while she's working at Starbucks, uh, she's earning the national average of uh, $34,000 annually, okay? That's what she makes. And we'll put per year so we, that we all know that it's annual, okay? Now, we're going to divide this up into two different areas, okay? And this is really important to understand. We're going to have one area where you're looking at interest rates under the pandemic. Okay, so I'll put the P for pandemic uh, interest rates. Okay. And then I'll put this as, I don't know, maybe post pandemic interest rates or somewhat post pandemic. Okay. Now, as we know, we know that today's interest rate is 3.25. Let's go back real quick. We're going to go on the screen. And we're just gonna see what the actual interest rate was a few moments ago, okay? Because it's really important that, that there's a good understanding here, okay? So if we were to look at an interest rate chart, let's just do this. There we go. Mortgage in interest rate history. Okay. So if we were to go a little bit further, let's just actually say that we're looking at this January of 2021. At that point, so August of 2021, uh, interest rates dipped to under 2.9. No, uh, December of 2020, it dipped to about 2.68, all right? So what does that mean? 
we're gonna find out exactly why this is important, okay? Just pay close attention, okay? Because without this, a lot of this stuff is not gonna make sense, but I guarantee it's gonna make sense. So again, we're gonna separate this. You're gonna have Sally again, who works for um, Starbucks. She's earning 34,000 a year. Oops. Okay. And post interest rate is gonna be that of 3.5, make it easier. And this one will be 2 point, I'll say seven. Okay, those, those are your interest rates. Sally's income has not changed. As a matter of fact, for most Americans, their income has declined, all right? Most Americans, the, you we're taking averages, right? You, you know, like difference between the median and the average. So most of their income has declined, okay? Most of their income has not increased, it has declined. So just by fluctuating or adjusting the interest rates, the smaller the interest rate, the more house Sally can afford. Okay, the more house Sally can afford. So what does that mean? If you were to take, if you were to type into a mortgage calculator and you're always gonna have a loan amount and you're gonna have a fix, uh, hopefully it's gonna be 30 years fixed and you'll have an interest rate, right? So for a $100,000 home, keep in mind the average home is not $100,000. But let's just say for Sally, she wants to buy a $100,000 home. If her interest rate is going to be that of a 2.7, then Sally is, is going to basically pay over 30 years $406 a month. Okay. The same house, but all we change is the interest rate to make it 3.5%. Now Sally is going to pay $449 per month. So you're probably thinking to yourself, okay, no big deal. Who gives a rat's butt, right? It gets a little bit more, it gets stickier than that, okay? Because Sally can afford either one of these homes, right? Because the price at this point is 100,000. So what realtors and many sellers started to do was like, hey, with interest rates being so low, just as easy as Sally can afford a $400 a month uh, uh, house, if we were to keep interest rates at a 2.7, right? Then you know what? Sally might be able to afford a $150,000 house, or she might be able to afford a $130,000 house without that much of, a, of an issue, right? Let me give you guys an example here. She can afford $449 a month. Well, with the same interest rate, $110,000, excuse me, $110,000 purchase equates at, at a 2.79 interest rate equates to $446 a month. Why is that important? Because that means that a seller, if they do quick math, they could say, you know what? For extra $10,000 in cash, I can get that today. Sally is still gonna be within her pre-qualification. So although realistically, what's really best for Sally is that she has a $100,000 home, but because the interest rates are so low, I can sell my, my home that's only worth $100,000 last year. I can sell it to her for 110. Not that the value in the home necessarily went up, not that I added new things to the home, I didn't make any additions to it, but I'm able to add, add more on, onto the house just because interest rates have made it more affordable, okay? If they were, if, if the seller were to try to sell the same home at $110,000 in today's market, right? To Sally, for example. And all, the only thing that changed is the interest rate, right? At a 3.5% interest rate. 
Sally wouldn't be able to afford it because it's only a $494 a month. And let me, and allow me to break this down a little bit more for you guys, all right? So I wanna drive this home. Anyone who has ever received a mortgage, you ever got a conventional or FHA mortgage, they will qualify, one of the things they qualify you are, qualify you off of is called a DTI, a debt to income ratio. And what they're trying to figure out is out of your income that you receive from work, there's a certain amount in which you have, quote unquote, from what they can see, money left over, right? And so based on your expenses, your budgeting, et cetera, et cetera, they may say, wow, based on what we're, what we're seeing here, you can probably afford a monthly payment of, let's say, 1300 bucks because the average rent in America right now is about 1200 bucks all right that's what people are paying so they say hey you can afford 1300 bucks <clears throat> well anyone who owns a property they typically pay their mortgage out of their rent that they receive right so someone might say oh Molly can afford a 1300 dollar home we're gonna go back to this example here. You got 2.7%, okay? And then you have 3.5% interest rate. This is how it plays in. They say, yeah, Molly can afford $1,300 a home in which she can pay 1,300 bucks a month. And let me show you guys what it looks like. If it's a, if it is a home at 3.5%, 3, 3 right? That's the interest rate then the sales price in which someone could charge Molly, just type it in, is $300,000. And I'm gonna help you guys out here. So for $300,000, Molly would pay for a mortgage $1,347 a month. That's how much she would pay, all right? Likewise, we'll go on the other side. If, if the interest rate just changed to 2.7, just, and this is just, this is less than a point, guys. I just want you guys to see. For Molly to pay the same amount For Molly pay the same amount. And let me show you what, what it will be. Nothing has changed with the home, all right? But $320,000 would be the sales price and Molly would pay $1,298. Nothing has changed with the home, okay? Nothing has changed with the home. If we can get a little bit closer, there we go. It would actually be $329,000 even, and that would get you closer to $1,334 a month. So what happened? Just because the interest rates changed less than 1%, you're able or a seller is now able to capture or take away from the market or inflate the market basically $29,000. And this is the process you can see that happens just on a smaller home. So when, so in many cases, because rent in many cases in the United States, right here, this 1300 bucks, Molly and her friends are paying rent, right? And rent might increase to $2,000 a month. And so then the mortgage company is saying, wow, Molly, you're able to pay a $2,000 a month lease. And Molly's like, yeah, you know, I can barely get it. You know, I can barely do it. So I'm trying to get qualified for a new mortgage. And so they say, well, hey, if you can pay $2,000 a month in a mortgage, then, you know, you can basically afford a half a million dollar home, right? And so then all of a sudden the price creeps up because a half million dollar home was about 2,500 bucks. 
And if your interest rate is 2%, then the seller, and many times they're gonna list that, that same home for $600,000, all right? This is essentially what's happening, what has happened in the market in, in less than 12 months. So now what's happening is many people, they noticed that a lot of that a lot of mollies, right, essentially were being taken advantage of. And they said, hey, if my neighbor was able to sell it at 329000 then I want to sell it at 329000 right? So what happened? They went ahead and put their property up on the market for 329000 but when they but when interest rates dropped from let's say three or excuse me when interest rates increase when interest rates increase from 2.7% all the way up to 3.5%, right? That has that means that now these same prices have to come down to court to coordinate or to correlate essentially is what is what's happening to correlate with what people can afford on a monthly basis okay so now the interest rates are increasing then the prices and the affordability have to come down so now the house that would have sold for basically uh 10 percent higher right that house now has to come back down to three hundred thousand dollars or less. All right. The higher the interest rate goes, the less the monthly affordability will be, and therefore the smaller the price has to be. So when they come, so when the federal or when the Federal Reserve compressed interest rates so small or so tiny, that that gave an incentive for many people to, to say, hey, this is the perfect time for me to be greedy. I'm gonna go ahead and list the same property that has the same qual qual quality as it had you know, a year before, but I'm gonna go ahead and list these properties for 50% 50 50 more in value, just because interest rates have gone from a 4% all the way down to a 2%. That, ladies and gentlemen, is what happened in the market. Now, what does that mean for you? That means that this might not be the best time to buy unless you can find a really good deal, all right? What that also might mean for you, as far as real estate is concerned, is that this might be the best time to sell. Because as, as interest rates go up, what you're gonna find is this. All of, all of the Miss Mollies who were able to purchase a home right? A lot of them purchased the home at the top of the market. We'll just do a, a bell curve, okay? So a lot of them, sadly, or out of emotion a lot of times, they purchased right here at the top of the market, okay? And as interest rates continue to continue to rise, what's happening now is that the value of that same home is decreasing. As we all know, homes are, evalu are evaluated based on, well, at least single, single family homes are evaluated by something called comps or comparables. And so that means that if John buys a house in that same neighborhood with the same specs, and then Sue buys a house in that same neighborhood with the same specs, and then Mark buys a house, and then another Sally buys a house, then all of a sudden, the comparables or the comps have to be based off of these purchases. It's going to take the average of these, and that is going to be the new value of that property. What does that mean for Sally? Remember, Sally purchased at the top of the market, right? And this, this, this right here, when you take the average between what Sally purchased for and what, and what the rest of her peers are buying it for, that might mean that Sally is going to be upside down or have negative equity of up to 42% of her value. Can you imagine that with it, that less than 12 months of you buying your property that you are now upside down? Because Sally would have purchased her property, for example, and this is just, we're using small numbers in, in hopes to make it easier for you guys. But 
If Sally were to, were to buy this property, for example, at $329,000, but everyone else is buying that property at, let's say, $280,000, basic mathematics will let you know that Sally is upside down, right? Because what, what basically happened is, is Sally bought at the top of the market, and now everyone else, they all want a deal, right? So they're all... They're all looking to, you know, negotiate and get a better deal. So basically, Sally is losing that much in equity in less than 12 months. Now, here's what here's what is also happening. Let's just say in this same exact, in the same example, what if because there, there was a foreclosure moratorium, right? That means that the that federal government held up all the foreclosures. Who's not to say that within the same neighborhood, Martha might be in foreclosure. Her home gets foreclosed on and it goes to a sheriff's cell. Terry's home go, is it goes to foreclosure in a sheriff's cell. Jessica's home goes to a foreclosure in a sheriff's cell, right? If or when that happens, which it will, this your, your new average is now this. Right, those are the most recent comparables of things that sold within three to six months. Okay, and so now where everyone else purchased their home at 280, but you have a large, a large amount of people that ended up selling their home via share of sale for let's say 150 to investors. Right, that is now going to hurt this group, it's going to hurt, it's going to hurt these guys right here. If you pay attention to what's going on in the real estate market, you're going to find that. This is what you're going to find. Okay. And an easy thing that anyone can do, truly, is that you can, if you want, you can go to Zillow.com. After you go to Zillow.com and, and you can type in almost any, uh, any city in the United States, for the most part, that, that, uh, that is still having a shortage. And what you'll find out is that a lot of properties are still on the market. What you'll find out are that a lot of properties are still on the market and they're sitting there. And they're sitting there because within a short period of time, the invisible economy has gone through this entire cycle or is currently going through this entire cycle of up and down. And what's causing the primary, this causing the big discrepancy of why things are going up and down, it's the interest rates, guys. The interest rates are what people uh, were using to qualify for these huge loans when in actuality, they should, they should have never done it in the very, very beginning. They should have never overpaid for the property. But what was happening was they were enticed to do so because Sally saw that her friend, Michael, he bought his first property. And then within a couple of months, literally a couple of months, Michael's value went up, you know, 20%. Sally was so intrigued and excited about it that she began her process to get qualified. And she, she watched all these people get in and she saw that their values were going up. And by the time that Sally got in, she got in on, on the top of the wave, okay? She got in right here at the top of the wave. And now cascading down is what we have for the values, all right? This is what I want you guys to understand in reference to the interest rates. Why is it so important, okay? This is really, I mean, this is as simple as you can get with, with economics. The interest rate, when, when it's low, it's dri it drives up the price. It doesn't mean that the value for the property is any better. It could, it, could, it, could, it could truly be the same crappy property as, as you know, the 1960s, for example. But when the interest rates go up, it compresses or shrinks the value of the properties, all right? And that's a very, very scary predicament to be in because in this example, Sally, more than likely, she's gonna be upside down for the next 10 to 15 years. She'll be, her equity is gonna be, is gonna be cap, capsulated. It's gonna be caught in that for the next couple of years, okay? 
she's not going to be able to refinance unless she had a significant down payment. She's not going to be able to refinance um, out of that unless something happens to give her forced appreciation. Okay. So with that being said, I hope that made sense. Hope you guys uh, got a lot out of this. And I will see you in the next video. Uh, be sure to check the links in the descriptions for further uh, education and examples and, and ways to help you guys become better and savvy investors and also to deal with alternative investments. Talk to you soon.